Hey Kawan, welcome to EDC Ready. Today we are doing a full review of this knife. This is the Buck Knives 112 Slim Select because it is slim and I have selected it for this review. Now, this guy, I did not buy him new. I bought this guy from a local guy here. His name is Shafiq, a super nice guy. I also bought uh, my CJRB Ria, it was also from him. I bought these two knives just for the review. You know, and I will eventually sell them off to the next person who wants to enjoy these knives. So uh, without further ado, uh, what am I going to compare it to? This is not a fair comparison because this guy is like 5 times the price. This guy on Blade HQ comes in just under 24 USD if you buy it in Malaysia. You might get it around 125, 130 ringgit right around there. This guy way more expensive, about 5 times the price of this guy. However, it is the only backlog I have to compare it with. But Without further ado, uh, let is uh, let us go straight into the measurements of these knives. Let's start with inches. We have a total blade length of, I believe, right under three inches. There we go. In millimeters, that's about seventy-four point eight millimeters. Uh, we have a blade thickness of. If you can center it, hold on, something's not right. There we go. Now, now, so yeah, so we have a blade thickness of right around three point two millimeters. 3.2, 3.1, something around there, which comes in at about 0.12 inches, which is a good uh, thickness for a blade stock, especially when you have a hollow grind. You have a thickness of a handle of, there we go, 0.42 inches, which comes in at just right around 10.5 millimeters. And then you have a height, which is particularly important for me in the pocket. We're coming in at about 31 millimeters or 0.12 inches. And one final measurement we need to do is the weight. Okay, weight, very important for carry here. Uh, it is in grams, so uh, you're gonna have to calculate the how much how much it weighs in ounces, 74 grams. It's about 2.61 ounces. Now, uh, if you do check the Blade HQ website, they do say that this is a 2.5 ounce knife. I'm measuring it a little bit heavier on my scale, so do keep that in mind, sorry. Uh, if you're wondering what this is, this is the Omega Springs on my Benchmade that broke off recently. So now my Benchmade actually doesn't have any spring action whatsoever. Okay, gotta be careful with that. Okay, so without further ado, let's get into this knife and its review from tip to butt. Now, the blade here, the blade steel is 420 if I'm not mistaken. 420, yeah, 420. And uh, 420, it's not 420 HC, it's not 440C, it is just 420. And uh, 420 is really, 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 really down low on the budget end of the steel category, which makes sense because this is a sub $25 knife. Uh, it is a steel that's going to be, I guess, okay for opening up envelopes, uh, for cutting up fruit. Uh, once in a while, I wouldn't really take this guy to cardboard very often. Although I have used this to cut a little bit of cardboard, it's, it's going to be okay for that one or two strikes across the cardboard. And I'll explain to you guys why a little bit later on. But 440C is not a very good steel with the exception of this stamp right here. Buck, Buck tends to uh, do their uh, heat treat really well. So you can really take 440, uh, 420 in this case up to maybe a slightly better performing 420 than what you're used to. So if you're looking for really budget blade steel, uh, this is it. Uh, but you are going to get a really good heat treat along with that 420, uh, 420 blade steel. Now, let's talk about the blade. Uh, 0.12 inches, which I really like. Couple that with a hollow ground right here. Don't know if you guys can see that. Yeah, that is a hollow ground blade. You get to a really thin edge. This edge, not only does it, uh, not only is it hollow ground, but the bevel is actually quite wide as well. I'm just comparing it to, uh, just to compare it to this guy. Okay, so this is the edge of the bevel. This is the edge of this bevel. The edge of the buck is much steeper than the spiderco. Now, uh, I checked with my friend who uh, I bought this from. I do not think that they, uh, that he sharpened it himself. So I think this is completely factory edge. And that just means that the it's, it's really thin behind the edge and this thing spi uh, slices surprisingly well. And I think that's why it, uh, it manages to keep its slicing or its working edge a lot longer than what I would expect from 420 steel because of that really thin hollow ground which leads to that really thin edge. Now, the shape of this blade is called a clip point. A clip point is okay, I guess. It's not my favorite blade shape. Uh, it has uh, uh, quite a bit of belly. I do prefer the slightly uh, Flatter blade shapes out there like this guy because I do a lot more pull cuts type 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 cuts that I prefer. Uh, the Spider Co. 
uh, this leaf shape I like quite a bit more. Uh, this guy, clip point, is going to be okay. It's going to be great for any kind of rocking cuts or slice or rocking slices that you need to do uh, in your daily life. However, not so suited for piercing and pulling because of that uh, belly right there. Now, one thing I do not like about this uh, blade shape is that uh, it doesn't have sharpening shawl. That's one. But it has a bit of a recurve. So a recurve is when uh, you don't have a completely flat portion back here. It kind of curves back down uh, down uh, onto this this part of the blade right here. But yeah, anyway. So here's an example of a blade that does not have a recurve. You just have flat and it just stops there. Uh, another one that has no recurve is this guy. This guy actually, the blade edge is actually quite quite shallow, meaning you have some flat here and then just a very shallow belly and a little bit of flat at the edge there. I'm not a big fan of recurve blades. Uh, they do look nice, I have to admit, but the thing about 420 steel is that it's going to be very easy to sharpen, but because of that recurve, it's not going to be so, it's not going to be so straightforward to sharpen. You can go at it with a strop and it'll work just fine. It'll sharpen the edge. Uh, because of that strop, uh, it's kind of a little bit more malleable. But if you're taking this to like a flat bench stone, it's not going to sharpen up that easily. But uh, I'm guessing if you're a really good sharpener, I guess it will work. But I am not a good sharpener, so that's not something I enjoy in my blades. Now, uh, moving back a little bit, it does not have a sharpening choil. Sharpening choil, which means that uh, if you take this to a flat bench stone, it's only going to make the recurve worse over time. So yeah, that's the thing I, I don't like about the, the, the blade itself. It has a okay look to it. You know, it's very thin behind the edge. I really like that. It has a nice hollow grind, but I don't fancy the blade steel 420. Uh, even though it's heat treated by Buck, which is really good. It's not a blade steel that I appreciate very much. Uh, and I do not like the recurve on the blade itself. Now moving back a little bit. Uh, as you can see here, all the all the all the screws are pinned, with the exception of the clip screws, which you can flip around. But because of that, I actually can't disassemble this knife. Unlike with uh, another backlock knife, which is this guy, uh, mind you, this guy is about five times more expensive. You can definitely disassemble this guy, and it's very easy. And it's very easy to disassemble this guy. And as a guy who likes to take apart his knives, uh, add a little bit of oil, maintain it a little bit, that is kind of a bummer. Uh, luckily. A backlock knife is relatively easy to take apart and put back together. Uh, sorry, it's relatively easy to maintain. All you gotta do is, you know, you take a cloth or a, or a piece of cotton bud or, and then you just like clean up the, the insides here and then you just add a little bit of oil and then you just move it back and forth and then the knife is kind of good to go. But with that being said, I would have liked to be able to uh, uh, remove these screws and then get into the innards of the knife. Now moving uh, up a little bit, uh, I forgot to mention that there is no finger troll. You can definitely rest your finger up here and then choke up like that. But uh, it does not have a dedicated space for a finger troll like uh, this guy. This guy right here, nice space, nice big room for your fingers. So if you're the kind of person that likes a finger troll, uh, you are not going to like this guy so much. Unfortunately, it does have a little bit of gap there. I don't mind not having a finger troll uh, as long as, uh, let's see if I have a knife for example, as long as you're not too far away from the blade once you're holding on to uh, the knife itself, okay? But this guy, because it has that kind of feature, kind of like the Spyderco Delica, uh, you're either a little bit too far away than what you would kind of expect, or you're kind of gripping onto something that's not meant to be gripped on. Now, let's talk about scales. This is their Grivery, their GFN, sorry, not Grivery, uh, their GFN. Uh, it is a kind of plastic, but it's a really nice kind of plastic. It's very similar to the Grivery that that Benchmade uses, where it's not just a smooth piece of um, of FRN, okay? The Spyderco uh, Native 5 salt also on the edges here, they can be pretty smooth. Uh, whereas this guy, like the Benchmade Bug Out, actually has some nice texturing on the actual handles itself. I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can kind of see just a little bit of roughness there, but in a, a good roughness. It's not a roughness that's going to tear up your hands. It's going to provide good uh, grip in the hand. Speaking of grip, very good ergonomics. Now, I do like knives with finger choils, as you can see. Finger choil one, number two here as well. You have one finger choil, two finger choils. You can grip the knife, very comfortable in hand. Uh, but this guy, it kind of goes at it and, and, and it kind of goes at ergonomics in a different way. You have this big gap right here, which your entire hand can kind of slot into and then grip. And that's actually very nice. The ergonomics of this knife is very nice. Couple that with, with some very nice rounded edges and some very nice soft round edges uh, at the uh, the edge of the scales right here. 
super comfortable knife to have in hand. And another thing that really stands out is that the pocket clip, because it's so wide, it doesn't create any hot spots like uh, you would get from this. This is the uh, Ferrum Forge uh, Stinger. And you do have a little bit of a sharp corner here which can which can kind of dig into your hand sometimes if you really bear down on it. The Benchmade bug out, the, the clip here is also a little bit high. It does protrude into your hand a little bit. Sorry, it is not working anymore. Uh, but this guy, because of the height, uh, because of the width of the pocket clip, it's actually very nice and comfortable in hand. And for me, it just fits nicely where this uh, this little ramp right here goes into the back of my hand. Speaking of the pocket clip, nice deep carry pocket clip. Uh, it has nice spring tension. It goes into the pocket really well, holds its retention really well. Uh, you can pull it out very easily because of how wide it is. However, you do get some clips screws that go up into the clip itself. And the clip is not a very tall clip, which means that you're not going to get very thick pants or very thick jeans up into the, the little crevice of the pocket clip. Uh, let's talk about the lock. The lock is a locker bag. It is not going to drop. Let me just check. No, it's not going to drop. Uh, I've had another back lock with a rear back lock uh, depression space right here. And I've cut myself with that Civivi Rustic Gen so many times. I'm so happy that now, not only does it have a little bit of uh, unsharpened edge here to catch your finger, but it's just not going to drop. The action is definitely a rougher action. You do have quite a lot of spring tension. And then you are definitely going to have a lot more friction uh, when it comes to the pivot because it is pin tight. And then there's no blade play at all, which is very nice. Uh, but you're not going to get a very smooth action from this pretty much at all. But if you're looking at just, uh, but if you're looking at this just from a functional point of view, uh, then it functions really well. You're not going to accidentally cut yourself. This is a very safe knife to use. You know, you you're going to open it one-handed. It's kind of a little bit tricky because of that roughness, but you can do it. And then closing it, you have to close it two-handed because otherwise it's not really going to close one-handed. So that keeps you very safe. Now, on the inside here, you, it is pretty sharp. Just like with many other FRN knives, the insides of the handles can be quite sharp unless they, well, uh, unless they chamfer it down, which they didn't. Now, another thing about this knife is that it feels really solid. It feels even more solid than the Native 5 Salt. And this, I would consider to be my hard use knife. I don't really hard use my knife. So, a backlog to me is it's going to be as hard as it gets because you have metal that goes almost all the way back here. But the, the, the slim select, the metal goes all the way to the back. So that means is that you're going to get very a, a very rigid knife. No, you can't flex this knife at all. It's going to feel very strong, very powerful in hand. And uh, let's go back to the handles right here. You do get some nice texturing, not just the texture of the surface itself, but you have this kind of nice diamond texturing right here. And you have this nice little buck design, uh, buck logo right there with their little anvil. Okay, in conclusion, uh, this knife is a great knife if you are if, if you kind of fit into two camps. The first camp is that you really like the traditional appeal of pocket knives. You know, a lot of pocket knives right now, we've kind of like moved on from what this is to what this is uh, now, which is the Para 3 Lightweight. You know, it's very lightweight, it has amazing ergonomics, has nice drop shot action, it has more modern steels. Okay, we have steels that do not rust in any practical way uh, in the LC200N. We have steels that are much more nitrogen based like this guy, the Nitro V. We have uh, coatings like this uh, ZT 0450 CF as well. Great detent, great action, smooth action. Even uh, another backlog knife like this, I can open it and, and I can close it one handed just like that. So it is a knife that if you buy it, you are going to buy it for the nostalgic aspect. You are buying this for the history of buck knives. You know, the knives that have been with your grandfather or the knives that have been around in America and all around the world for like 100 years. I do not know how long they've been around. I'm assuming it's 100 years. So this is the first camp, the nostalgia knife buyer. The next camp is that if you're looking for a really safe but really affordable knife, this is going to be a very good knife for you. It's only 24 for USD or about 120, 125 ringgit here in Malaysia. It's going to be a really safe knife to use. It's going to be a very decent knife for you to use or for you to even give to someone else. Now, uh, the kind of person that would not want this is the kind of person like me. You know, I've I've had some hedonistic adaptation where there's some things that I've come to appreciate from knives. I like a drop shot action. 
I like uh, very uh, nice steels. I like LC 200 n because it just doesn't rust. I like good action and all that is not present in this year knife. But what is present is the aforementioned nostalgia, the history of the buck knife itself. All right, so yeah, that's all guys. Thank you very much for uh, tuning into this review. And if you're still here, uh, do check out the links down below for my Patreon and my social media platforms. Thanks guys and stay ready.